you'll, you'll notice I'm wearing a yellow t-shirt. I, I love the uh, that yellow t-shirt that was part of it. Do you have any t-shirts from your exes? This is David Stark from Watcher Pass. Today I'm talking to Goran Stalewski, the writer and director of Of An Age, which is coming to theaters on February 17, 2023. I'm going to talk to him right now. And while you're watching, if you can like and subscribe to this channel, that would be fantastic. It helps me out a lot. Thank you. So thanks so much for joining me. This is Goran Stalewski, the writer and director of Of An Age, which is coming to theaters on February 17, 2023. It is a beautiful, delicate coming of age film about an unconventional relationship at a time when that was not you know, the norm that was not really open, at least in this family. I loved it. It is just such a fantastic film. And thank you so much for your time. Thank you. It's very happy to be chatting. Of course, of course. So we chatted before for your previous mm -hmm. film, uh, You Won't Be Alone, which is a Macedonian folktale about witches. I think it also is a prequel to Of an Age, right? This is the direct sequel to that mm -hmm. uh, that earlier film. Um, uh, gonna, uh, sorry, You Won't Be Alone was basically my brain split between two witches in the 19th century mountains of Macedonia, whereas this film, my brain split between two decades in you know, over 1999. Yeah, I think they're fair, really. It always comes in pairs, right? It always comes in pairs. There might be claws sometimes, sometimes not, but you know. I would love to see you kind of pull these all together into some sort of weird expanded universe in some future yeah. film. Uh, that, that would be fantastic. I mean, challenge to that, so <laughs> So, yeah, this film felt, I think, I don't know, I'm just hi hypothetically, think, or I'm just like uh, guessing here, this felt a little bit more personal of a film, maybe something that, uh, you know, touched you specifically or something that you kind of wanted to get on paper. What was the inspiration for this? Was this based on something in your life or just, you know, things that you observed growing up? Mm. I mean, it's not autobiographical in the sense that, you know, none of these things happen to me. Like, I don't, I don't dance, like, it's a ballroom dancer. And I'm just like, <laughs> even in a nightclub, like, I, I don't, I don't dance except under extreme pressure. And even then, not at all well. So, you know, like, there's other, like, there's other lots of, you know, things that aren't from my life. But, like, emotionally, you know, these, the, these feelings and the time and the place is very much, you know, how and where I grew up. So, in that sense, I guess it's a lot more personal. And that's unusual for me because usually, um, you know, as is obvious from my previous film, I, I write and direct to live lives in other people's bodies. I, I'm much more interested to, to see other perspectives, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and in this, even in this case, like, to be honest, um, the film kind of evolved when uh, I cast Elias Anton to play Cole, the main character. I mean, he looks and sounds very different to what I wrote, but, like, I when his audition tape first came through, I was just like, you know, imagine this story with this set of eyes and this voice and this physicality. Um, and what does the film feel like? And I was like, that's just so much more interesting than what I initially conceived. Like genuinely, you know, my heart was being foster. So I'm, I'm still looking for, I'm still looking for the things that excite me. And that's not always something that comes from my own life, but I really like connecting with other people, you know. Um, and, you know, obviously it is a very personal film in many other ways still. For sure. Uh, from that from that uh, description, I would say you're probably more of an Adam than Cole, based on the you know the characters in the film. <laughs> okay, don't tell anyone. Okay. I will. I will. Um, but that, that is all... to the demographics and just assume um, I'm assuming some, like the ethnic migrant kid as usual. I'm like, I mean, I'm, I'm very much Ebony as well, but that's a whole other story. Yeah, for sure. No, for sure. I mean, I'm sure that both of them have aspects of your character, so or both of these characters have aspects of you, along with other things. Um, that was really interesting that uh, that Elias Anton wasn't, you know, your envisioned Cole. I'm always curious about that when you're writing something and these characters be, kind of become alive in your head. You know what what they're like to you, and then you know is the actual actor, um, you know, th the same or different than that. And so, did you go back and change the script or change aspects of the script? because of uh, Elias Anton, or is this, you know, he just kind of adapted to your character and made it his own? Yeah, it did, like, you know, make some incremental changes in the script. I went back a little bit, uh, but, like, they were quite minor. And then, I don't know, like, we were also spending so much time together. I think he became a lot more like me, actually. <laughs> anyway, um, and a lot more like the character even is written. Uh, and then it wasn't like, I think I actually changed a lot of it back that I was planning to, you know, shift away in terms of what was written, but I think it was more that, like, uh, emotionally, like, he built on things, and, like, there were glances and gestures and, like, bits of improv 
uh, that sort of shifted certain um, scenes and like the the feelings you know accumulated a lot faster within the running time of the film. Like there was this, the conversation that happens you know in a car at nighttime originally was a lot longer because mm -hmm. and he was doing a lot more heavy lifting in terms of what is connecting these two. Um, but when it came to editing, I just didn't, you know, and that was my favorite scene, scene in the script. Like that was the reason I wrote the film initially. But when it came to editing, like 80% of it just felt unnecessary. And it wasn't even like a struggle to cut it. I was just like, no, but the feelings, you know, that these words were meant to capture just kind of accumulated and in a deeper way, you know, from previous gestures and scenes. So I don't really need to say anymore. Um, so it's things like that. And then. Um, Hattie, who plays Ebony, and Tom, who plays Adam, also like they improvised quite a bit as well. And I mean, most of what you see on screen was the written dialogue in many ways, but there's little moments and shifts and, and things that kind of come from their own natural personality, which I find, you know, it's not something you can write. You, you kind of discover it in the human being that's in front of you. And either you're an idiot and you're like, stick, I'm going to stick to my vision, or you're going to like look at this you know, treasure that's in front of you and go, how do I, you know, preserve this in a movie, really? Yeah, for sure. And that's one of the things I, I loved about this film. And also, if You Won't Be Alone, it did feel much more kind of natural. Like, I know that you said mm. for that film, you also didn't, you know, dictate what they said, even though you wrote it. You let the mm. actors kind of explore and, you know, create the characters and create the situations and just everything feels more organic and natural that way. And I love that about this film, the whole, mm. like, and they're in the car, and they're chatting. I just wanted to hear them say more things. I just loved hearing their conversation mm -hmm. as they're going. Like, if you put, if you wrote this down, I'd be like, okay, they're on a road trip for uh, an hour. And you're like, okay, that sounds very yeah, boring. Uh, but when you see it, it's wonderful. I'm stunned this film got made based on like, what it <laughs> you know, could have turned into from the script. But, but also what's interesting is that like, a lot of the bits people think are the improvised ones aren't. And what happens is when the, the, I think when actors have this kind of freedom, even the bits that are written kind of emerge in an organic, spontaneous way where it feels improvised. And and someone like Hattie Hook has this uncanny knack of coming up with dialogue. It feels like the most perfect writing. Like it's just it's just playing someone so removed from her personality. It's like scary. But like you know, there was there's the whole monologue she has in the phone booth, like later in the film, that there was a time that she just like improvised on the spot. It wasn't meant to be in the film, but like I heard her speak, and I'm like, holy fucking shit. And it's like, you know, it illuminates character economically. Like it's it's writing in the best possible sense, but it's not, it just came out of her in the moment. Like, and yeah, it's you know, these little miracles, like I'm I'm I feel so lucky to you know, witness much of this capture in a movie. For sure, for sure. And uh, I was I felt lucky to watch it. Um, so I know we have very limited time. I'd like to switch. So I call it the lightning round. They're just very lightweight questions about the film. I want to see how your experience is. Yeah, yeah, go for it. There we go. All right. So uh, you'll, you'll notice I'm wearing a yellow T-shirt. I, I love the uh, that yellow T-shirt that was part of it. Do you have any T-shirts from your exes? No, but it's really disturbing that like... Um... Tom Green and my husband are the same size, and Matt ended up wearing a lot of the. My husband Matt ended up wearing a lot of the clothes. <laughs> <That's Yeah. awesome. laughs> Not the yellow T-shirt, but the white T-shirt he has. I would argue it looks better than my husband wore better. Well, yeah, maybe you should write a film uh, and have your husband star and and start that progression. I just, just remember, he's an extra in all of them actually. So yes, yeah. <laughs> <There you> <laughs> I am um, too actually. What was the biggest competition you had growing up? Biggest competition. Oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god. There has, like, I know there was like a maths competition, but that wasn't it. There was something that I missed out on at some point in my life. I don't know. I'm probably like, you know, when I was convinced I would get like uh into a film festival with my like first short film and it played literally nowhere. And that set the pattern for the next 15 years. Okay, and I think some of that bareness came in into this film as well. Um, yeah. And remember, you are the writer of this film, so I'm using your words. Have you ever been called gay fat? Yes, by others as well as by myself. I, I don't understand the term. You look a wonderful, but uh, I did love that line in the film. Uh, so I know when we talked earlier, you said you had like 10 treatments that you were kind of floating around trying to get made. I'm sure you probably have uh, something else coming out. So this film comes out on February 17, 2023. You should definitely check it out. It is fantastic. Uh, but after people watch this and they kind of fall in love with your characters, what can they look for next from you? Um, well, I just finished editing the third one. Um, it's called <laughs> Past Beginners. So I hope to talk to you about that one soon, hopefully later this year. 
Um, and that's a, it's a story about a kind of unconventional family of queer people living in Skopje, in, in Macedonia in the present day. It's a very different kind of society. Um, and it's kind of wild and funny and heartbreaking and insane as well. So I'm very excited to share that one as soon as possible as well. I just feel like every time I talk to you, you're going to say my next project is very different from the thing I just did, because that seems to be the trend. I'm waiting for the like space opera uh, in, in your fourth film. The, 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 oh, the yeah, yes, right. space I'm writing opera. this down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will help you write. I would love to spend some more time in your head, but I know awesome. you have limited time. I know you're very busy. So the film is of an age. It comes to theaters on February 17, 2023. This is writer director Goran Stilevsky. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks so much, David. This is always a lot of fun. I know. I can't wait for the next one. I can't wait to see the next film. <laughs> Thank you, Goran. And I also love that your the ex in the film was a Macedonian person named Goran. I was like, oh, okay, there it is. There it is. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm also in the film. I play a toxic dude at the airport. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. That was Goran Stilevsky, the writer and director of Of an Age, which is coming to theaters on February 17, 2023. It is a beautiful coming of age film that I definitely think you should check out. And now you know more about it because of our conversation with Goran. So definitely check it out. And if you like this interview, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot. Make sure all my new content goes straight to you. Thank you.